Law Warrior Double Feature, ST-8A, Shootist. Overview. Although the Shootist was initially tagged as a command mech by its Star League creators, its electronic equipment soon gave way to a new generation of more sophisticated active probes and electronic countermeasures. However, the mech's reliable delivery systems made it a valuable all-round machine, and the Star League army continued to order the Shootist. With good speed for its size and ample weapons bay, the Shootist became the perfect mech to provide maximum firepower for heavy lancers engaged in close combat. Modern-day Shootist pilots among the Comguards routinely seek the largest opponent on the field and engage it as quickly as possible. Though it has existed for centuries, the Shootist never appeared in great numbers. Even during the height of production, construction of this mech barely kept up with combat losses, and few intact Shootists survived anywhere in the inner sphere save in Comstar's storage bays. Comstar's use of the Shootist in the Battle of Tukid introduced the mech to most inner sphere armies for the first time since the earliest succession wars. Capabilities Unlike most other mechs, the Shootist is designed to provide maximum armor protection rather than firepower. The difference stems from the design's initial role as a battlefield command platform. The mech carries 12 tons of ferrofibrous armor around a standard frame, and each location is well armored, though a single concentrated salvo can breach the rear torso. When more sophisticated designs replaced the Shootist as the favored SLDF command mech, the designers at Mitchell partially modified it, but kept the heavy armor to protect it against heavier foes. Although firepower wasn't the top priority of the Shootist designers, the mech carries a respectable array of weaponry. The Shootist's primary weapon is a Death Giver autocannon, a devastating weapon at close range. Those familiar with the Shootist, however, see its extended range lasers as its true claim to fame. Accurate at all ranges, the weapon can savage an opponent as the Shootist closes the distance. Two medium pulse lasers and a head-mounted small round out this deadly mech's arsenal. Pulse technology had only recently been perfected when the Shooters went into production, and the mech's designers took full advantage of it. After a long absence, Pulse weapons have begun to re-emerge on the Innisfere battlefields. Deployment The Shootist is almost exclusively deployed with heavy and command lancers. Particularly paranoid commanders occasionally attach a Shootist to their personal bodyguard. Shootists work well together, but their limited availability makes the presence of them of more than one in a lance pretty unlikely. Just as he did in the days of the Star League, these mechs lead the charge of heavy lancers and act as the Comguard's vanguard when engaging the clans. 3058 Upgrade Overview When it was unveiled in 2621, the Shootist was intended to be a command mech in the SLDF's Royal Battle Mech Regiments, stationed within the Terran hegemony. However, ten years later, it was eclipsed in that role in both Line and Royal Regiments by the Battlemaster, Despite this, the Star League army continued to order the Shootist, for it proven to have a fine balance of speed and weaponry. Judging it to be the perfect mech to provide maximum firepower for heavy lancers engaged in close combat, the Shootist remained in service with many royal formations. Like their SLDF predecessors, modern-day Shootist pilots routinely seek the largest opponent on the battlefield and engage it as quickly as possible. Capabilities the Shootist was designed to provide maximum armor protection rather than firepower, a consideration that stems from its design role as a battlefield command platform. The mech carries 12 tons of ferrofibrous on a standard frame, and every location is well armored, with a single concentrated salvo being able to breach the rear torso. Although firepower wasn't its top priority, the mech carries a respectable array of weaponry. While the Death Giver autocannon is a devastating weapon at close range, experts see its Blackenberg Extended Range Large Laser as the Shooter's true claim to fame. Accurate at all ranges, the weapon can savage an opponent as it closes the distance, two medium pulse lasers and a head-mounted small rounding out its arsenal. Pulse technology had only recently been perfected when the Shooter's went into production, and its designers took full advantage of such. The combination of a standard engine and case allows the shooters to survive a catastrophic ammunition explosion that would cripple or destroy most of the Star League designs. Deployment Though it has existed for centuries, the shooters never appeared in great numbers. Even during the height of production, construction of the mech barely kept up with losses, and few survived the succession wars, save those in Comstar's storage or Clan Brian caches. Comstar, and later on the word of Blake, deploy the Shootist almost exclusively with heavy and command level 2s. Particularly paranoid commanders have been known to attach a Shootist to their personal battlefield bodyguard, and the SLDF discovered that Shootists work well together, but their limited availability now prohibits such concentrations. 
The brutal fighting on Tukia took a heavy toll on its uh, Homestar shootist lances, and the schism that formed the word of Blake further depleted these numbers. The violent clashes between Congard and Blake's troops in the Chaos March have only served to hasten the end for this classic Star League design. There are now less than 50 shootists remaining in the Inner Sphere, and unless production is revived, experts predict that the current conflict will be the redoubtable shootists' last stand. Variants Several of the surviving shootists have been upgraded with the improved C3 system, replacing the medium pulse lasers with ER mediums and removing the small laser, allowing a C3I unit to be mounted in the right torso. Most of these modified mechs retain the autocannon, though a few have been replaced with a larger weapon, such as a Gauss rifle. This second modification requires the removal of a single heatsink. Notable Mech Warriors Adept Matthew Kincaid and Adept Simon Kincaid Serving with the 4th Division, these identical twins were the inspiration for the masterful deception designed to keep Comstar ignorant of the Word of Blake militia's true strength. In field exercises, the brothers used their rare and distinctive shootists, both bearing the same identifying markings, to confuse their opponents as to the actual size and location of the command to which they were attached. Presenter Marshal Cameron uh, Saint-Germain was so impressed by the effectiveness of the ruses that the Kincaids executed that he formulated the Blakists' build-up around the same concept. By building duplicate level 3 formations, he was able to secretly expand all of his divisions to a full strength of 6 level 3s each. While Innisfere intelligence agencies had some success at discovering a build-up, it was indeed underway, they failed to detect that many of the divisions, their component level 3s were scattered across the terror system and the Chaos March, were as much as 40% bigger than they had estimated. With Matthew serving in Blake's Messenger's third beta, and Simon assigned to the previously unknown Keepers of the Gates three beta, the 4th Division participated in operations against the Comguard's 83rd Division, the White Cyclones, on tall trees, as the Blakists overwhelmed the Comguard stationed in the Chaos March. Right, so, the shootist. Mass 70 ton, chassis is a Denenbach Mitchell Mark IV with a Vox 280 power plant, giving it a cruise speed of 43 kph and a max speed of 65 kph, again with no jump capacity. Its armour is an MV Ferrofibrous, and its armament is a single Death Giver AC-20, a Blackenberg ER large laser, two Blackenberg medium pulse lasers, and a Dynatech Mark III small laser. It's manufactured by Mitchell Vehicles, with no primary factory anymore. Its communication system is a Domin Echo 2. Its targeting and tracking system is the Wayne Marksman. This translates into a walk of four and a run of six. It has 13 heat sinks, uh, but they are double, so it gives it 26 heat dissipation. It has nine armor on the head, 34 on the CT with 10 on the rear, 24 on the side torsos with five on the rear, and 22 on the arms and 30 on the legs. The AC-20 is located in the left arm, its ammo is located in the left torso, giving it a total of 10 shots. It has a case in the left torso as well. The ER large laser is in the right torso, and its pulse laser is located in the right arm and CT. And finally, the small laser is mounted in the head. It's a clunky looking machine, but you know what? I don't dislike it. Its head is very, very familiar to me. It, it reminds me a lot of the Grasshopper for some reason. And I also kind of wish that it may have just been using the Grasshopper's head as a base, but the rest of the body was com was a completely unique design. I, there's bits of it for me that are screaming that, no, this thing is, is hideous, like, you know, keep it away, but I kind of like it. It's so unique looking in that respect. I can see what they're going with the idea that it, it's supposed to be chunky and, and thickly armoured, so the, the actual physical frame of it is supposed to be representative of such, that it, this is not an agile machine, it's not going to be you know, dancing around and anything. It's just going to get up close and just start firing everything and, and until you die from it. And that's great. I, I like this. It's a cool idea. I like the story of it as well, the idea of, uh, of the mech never really being in particularly large numbers. It's one of those kind of like, you know, one of those rare occasions where you might see one ever uh, at certain, you know, during certain periods of Innisfere history. To the point where some pilots will say, like, oh, I've heard of it, but I ain't I never seen a shootist before. You know, oh, the uh, I've seen pictures of it once, or I've seen some some holovids of a shootist in action, but actually seeing one, no, no, it's like, you know, that thing's rare. So I like that idea. It's a bit sad of, at the time of writing this, and I'm sure that's since been changed by a, a, a later book, but it's a bit sad, the idea that this thing would be going out uh, at 
especially at the sort of the height of the the rearmament of the inner sphere that, that like no company have decided to pick this thing back up and start making it again whether it would be a a comstar or hell even a word of blake and trust me the full word of blake wankism was going on with this one jesus yeah oh they've got twins and they're so great sorry what i need i need more information on this like uh just oh fuck off <laughs> I'm, I'm sick of the word of blake writing in the in the later upgrade thing i know they had bad guys they had to write but good god apparently uh, apparently every single member of the fucking word of blake were machiavellian geniuses the, the, the apparently the rest of the industry were huffing glue or something at the time and didn't realize any of this shit yeah, it makes you wonder how apparently the any of the great houses even survived long enough to be able to hold territory while while there were people like this knocking about in Comstar. And by the sounds of it, all they needed was was to have like a couple of twins running around Battlenecks and like, oh my god, they're like they're in two places at the same time. What could it be? Oh, the Rebecca's are identically painted. It's like Jesus, how stupid are they? Ugh. It's very sad. It's very sad. The, the, the writing, where a mech write-up is in, being created in favor of pushing like a narrative thing, whereas the narrative should be happening in the source books, not like in you know the 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 main sort of story source book, not this stuff. This is just supposed to tell me about the mech, you know, that lady. I'm trying to eat my burger. Yeah, you know, it's it's that. It, eh. <laughs> I'm not going on a rant. I'm not doing it. The shootist deserves better. It doesn't deserve to, have it to be ruined by a rant by me about wobbies. It's fine. I like the shootist. It's a fine mech. It's even given me a bit of an idea for a future campaign idea, which I need to jot down. So, while I jot that down, I'd like to thank all of you, as always, for listening. Uh, it means a lot uh, for everyone to take the time to listen to it, and uh, and that you you know that I've I've built up. Uh, all of you who are listening to it, um, you know, uh, several hundred, sometimes over a thousand people, uh, which for my channel is pretty damn impressive uh, to to want to uh, hear about these these uh, these old write ups and, and stuff. I mean, yeah, they're just out of the book, but yeah, you know, I, I I'm doing something marginally right, so that's fun. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks everybody. Have a good week, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you for the next one. Which uh, let's see what it'll be. It'll be the Spartan. There you go. So have a good one all. Bye bye bye.